you talking about? He's been waiting on this for a long time. Who is he? Now where is he? Where's who? Hey, what's your name? Daniel. With an L. <laughs> Daniel? Yeah. Um, Daniel. Daniel? Hola, Daniel. What's he look like? He's young, but the force is strong with this one. The man has ice in his veins. He wears glasses, so he can see. He's the savior of worlds. What, are you like my savior or something? <laughs> no. Daniel, is it true? I wouldn't make a big thing of it. What team? All takes place in a space station. You're living on a space station? Sorry, love. You gotta save the world. Fascinating how much a single player can alter the destiny of a team. This split, Space Station Gaming has re-risen to the top, delivering a hyper-competitive RLCS roster. Having suffered a few lower-than-anticipated results in the last split, Space Station decided to break up their illustrious trio. Having narrowly missed out on the first LAN event in over two years of Rocket League, Arsenal, Rettles, and Sipical decided to break up the band. With Sipical opting to take his talents to the dynamic and dangerous phase roster, Arsenal, Rettles, and their coach Chrome had a difficult decision on their hands. In a trade window riddled with big names and rumors floating about, Space Station needed to deliver and pick up a strong third. After all, losing Sipical is not easy. Like we talked about in our video last week, Sipical has at many points in his career been considered one of the best players in the world, and I still think he's in a conversation for one of the greats we still have. So after some debating and some back and forth, the player that they ended up going for was Daniel. Now, Daniel was an up and coming prodigy that if you follow the scene closely, there's a good chance you had already heard of him before he joined Space Station. He has been waiting in the competitive wings for a while, and he was highly lauded as a talent coming into this split, and so far through two regional events, we've seen why. With Daniel now in the mix, Space Station has become one of the dominant forces in North American Rocket League this split. Finishing top four in both events we've had to this point is certainly a breath of fresh air for a Space Station team that is determined to be one of the best teams in the world. We've seen this in other sports as well. The Cleveland Cavaliers have been seemingly revived overnight with the addition of Evan Mobley. The Cincinnati Bengals were a pseudo meme for decades, and now the addition of Joe Burrow has them going to a Super Bowl. Ash Ketchum's Pokemon party wasn't shit until he picked up Charmander. You guys get where I'm going with this. There are a ton of ways in which Daniel affects winning for this team, but this is a YouTube video, and if you're anything like me, you have a short attention span, so let's just start with the most exciting stuff first. Starting with his scoring, Daniel's attack is across the board with air dribbles, flip resets, power shots, and fakes. Daniel is a threat to score from literally anywhere on the field. If he finds himself in the middle of the pitch, he can make difficult double touches look routine. This is something that Chicago and Ruddles were just raving about in a recent YouTube video where they were just saying that Daniel hits these time and time again like it's nothing. And one of the most impressive aspects of Daniel's double touches is just the amount of power that he's able to create on his first touch. This is something that Wait and Pilkin was just talking about in one of his mechanics videos, but these laser doubles, I mean, look at how much power on that first touch. It's just so hard for Garrett to read something like that. This is something Daniel does time and time again. He's a lethal weapon from anywhere on the field, and these double touches are an especially effective method of scoring. His flip resets can be carried full field and dropped heavily on his opponent's weary heads. We see him do it here against Charlotte Phoenix, getting that nice little double touch past them off the reset, gets both of them to commit. And this little pass right here he does to himself on the sidewall is something Daniel does a lot as well. Daniel's ability to score at a high level is something that we don't always see, especially from players who are so new to the RLCS. Overnight, he has become one of the most potent offensive threats that North America has to offer. And we see on this play here, he gets the reset, full field dribble, Rettles actually ends up passing it to Daniel there for the goal. Daniel thrives as a passer, often utilizing incredibly finessed flip resets that confuse defenses and allow him to seamlessly deliver opportunities to his teammates. The way he is able to feather his boost here, catching up to this ball, FaZe just doesn't know if he's going to be able to get a touch or not, rattles the slot underneath. 
but where Daniel has really found a claim thus far is as a shooter in the clutch. The young goat has the ice man and it is shown time and time again in huge moments. Here in the lower bracket final against phase two one zero seconds on the clock, Daniel hits this just past AJ. The way in which SSG plays the game allows him to not only be confident in continuing to grow in his role, but also provides incredibly high quality looks. This shot here from Daniel, we're in game seven, we have overtime against Oxygen, and that shot actually is going to complete the reverse sweep by Space Station. Daniel has certainly added a ton of firepower to this Space Station offense, but the manner in which they play is something that I want to touch on because I think it's very important to why he is able to thrive the way that he has so far and why I think he can continue to develop as one of the best players in the world. If I had to summarize Space Station's offense into one word, it would be physical. While all three players are certainly possessing of individual finesse and skill, Space Station's primary vehicles to drive their offense are bumps and demos, and this shows up not only on the stat sheet, but also in a lot of the goals that you'll be seeing over the course of this video. From a stats perspective, Space Station is out demoing the entire RLCS, and no, I don't mean North America, literally the entire globe of RLCS. On a per game basis, Space Station's 5.77 demos is more than a full demo higher than the next closest team, and that of course is at the time of making this so maybe that has changed a little bit but regardless they are far and away one of the most demo heavy teams that we have while arsenal may be the first player that comes to your mind when you think physical and aggressive the king of this proverbial stat domain is actually Ruddles. slater actually leads north america in demos per five minutes at just a shade over two and even though he has a pretty hefty lead over the rest of the competition Third place is actually his teammate Arsenal. On a per five minute basis, Arsenal is top three in North America and top six in the world in demos. With the present game meta utilizing bumps and demos pretty heavily, how does Space Station manage to be far and away the favorites in pulling off this play style? While Space Station are exceptionally proficient in demoing defenders flat-footed on their own goal line, they deliver demos in a lot of nuanced ways as well. A lot of demos and scoring opportunities come from actually weak side or backside demos where recovering players will find demolitions from opponents' blind spots. This opens up a massive pockets of space and must just be a nightmare for teams to try and communicate through. We see time and time again that Rettles, Arsenal, and even Daniel sometimes will be rotating out of a play and then will turn on a dime and drive themselves back into the defense catching them from the side or behind where their cams can show that they're coming for a kind of sneak attack. But keep in mind that the adjective I used to describe SSG was physical, not just demos. While Rettles paves the proverbial way with this explosive stat, Arsenal is arguably the most physical player in the world. Picking up his fair share of demos, Arsenal is a master of being physical through bump plays, sticking to the ball, and ultimately just pestering team defenses. Arsenal's play style not only rushes other players' movements and decisions, but it also must be a nightmare for opposing comms as well. At the highest level, Rocket League is a game where games are decided by the small things, like solid rotations and good communication. With Arsenal constantly being a nuisance on and off the ball and Rettles deleting players entirely from the pitch, Space Station's physical nature is a nightmare for opposing teams to stay level headed and not become too jumpy or hurried. Something all three players on Space Station do at such a high level is utilize fakes. We were just talking about the pressure that it gets created off of demos, but here we see Daniel totally bait a touch out to get a quick steal, and this is something that he does pretty commonly. On this play here, we see the exact same thing. Arsenal goes to the fake to slow down the play, and then Daniel baits out this touch right here and then fires a laser of a pass over to Rettles. You can see here, Beast Eponium tries to go for the quick touch, thinking that Daniel's going to beat him to that ball. Daniel backs off, and it gives him a ton of space. When you factor in Daniel's individual greatness and the physical nature of his teammates, Daniel finds himself some fantastic opportunities around the pitch to create out of. This high tempo, high demo approach gets opponents moving rapidly, then slowing down the play or utilizing fakes makes defending the young prodigy even harder. Here, the pass from Rettles and physical play from Arsenal leads to an easy goal. 
To keep opposing teams from honing in on the game plan, it's important for each member of the team to use fakes and physical plays on behalf of themselves and others too. For example, if Ruddles and Arsenal were to only do this on behalf of Daniel, it would be easier to read, but plays like the one we just watched continuously keep defenses guessing. But at the end of the day, talent reigns supreme, and in this play here, we see Daniel really put everything together at once. First, he uses the individual outplay to secure the ball, then the dribble and fake to have the defense guessing, and then finally the physical play on the goal line and a quick dish to his teammate in a critical game six. With Rettles and Arsenal really taking Daniel under his wing, it's a really great situation for him to continue blossoming and growing his skills. Having confidence in yourself is huge, but also having teammates who are confident in your ability and their own abilities, like we see with Rettles on this 1v1 musty right here, is critically important to growing within the RLCS. I'm sure there's also some benefit to being able to compare your skills to somebody like Arsenal's when you see this beautiful mechanical musty flick. I'm not really sure what to call this one. But confidence is key and Space Station has it in buckets. So yeah guys, that's it for my rundown of Daniel and how his individual greatness and teammates are allowing him to shine in the RLCS so far for the winter split. SSG is poised to travel to LA and compete in the winter major. I don't think that they're a squad that any top team is excited to play. Their style and pop off abilities seem like they're mentally draining on the opposition to say the least. I think that Space Station will perform well, but I currently have them a shade under NRG and FaZe and about neck and neck with G2. As they continue to gain team cohesion and Daniel continues to develop, the sky's the limit though. I'm really excited to watch this team moving forward and catch all of the acrobatics Daniel will pull off. It's important to always add that his teammates do so much to enable this and certainly contribute in massive ways themselves, but that's just my opinion. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.